I'm Paul Fleming McCullough, and in this video, I'll share the successful approach I take for practical change management and encouraging buy in and excitement. But first, let's look at some familiar problems that highlight why we need practical change management. So people don't understand what change management is. There is individual resistance towards the new solution that's being offered, or there is organizational cultural resistance to the change. And our solution to those problems is taking a be helpful, get engagement approach to our change management activities. Be helpful is understanding what our audience needs and providing the right solution. Get engagement keeps them coming back for more. And when you do both of those better than anyone else, you become the go-to change manager. It's your messaging, your leadership that people rely on and use and follow. So what does our audience need? buy-in and excitement for the coming change. And one benefit of achieving buy-in is showing how important change management is. Now, how does the solution fulfill that need? Because we're sending the correct message, the right message to the right people at the right time. So change management is about telling the story of why things are changing, how it's going to benefit you, and what actions you need to take to get those benefits. Because importantly, it's about generating understanding and trust around the change. So how does it work? So the two elements of practical change management are creating buy-in and excitement. And critical to achieving buy-in is having a realistic and achievable plan that helps people accept and trust what is happening. They can understand what part they play in the change and how the change benefits them. So with that perspective, our plan should clearly set out what behaviours we want our stakeholders to have tomorrow, how our stakeholders can transition from what they're doing today to what they need to do tomorrow, how those new behaviours generate the benefits, and who our stakeholders are so we can provide the right message to the right people at the right time. So as you create your plan, ask yourself, be helpful, how do I encourage and what barriers to remove questions? So for example, how can we encourage buy-in for the new software, the new process, or the new team structure? How can we encourage excitement for the journey between now and launch? And how can we encourage continued engagement after the launch? And what barriers need to be removed so people can do this? Now we understand what we need to do, it's time to tell everyone. To make sure that our messages are going to the right people at the right time, we need to swap shoes and see things from the perspective of our end users. Because our goal is to help them become as excited about the project as we are by sharing the reasons that put a smile on our face. And so there should be a clear progression in our message. In the beginning, it's all about the impetus for the change. Then partway through, the focus is on features and benefits. And near the end, it's training dates and what to do when the new system is switched on. The way we provide our message through websites, videos, training materials and presentations, etc. should encourage that participation and confidence in the change. And this is where the Get Engagement checklist comes in. Because our materials are easy to understand, easy to use. They fulfill the need and they grab attention. So now we have our plan to create buy-in. We've created our messaging. Now how do we put all that together and generate the excitement? Well, we put a human face to the project, and we talk with people. Now, that might seem like a simple idea, although it can be difficult to do, you know, depending on perhaps geographical locations or size of the organization that you're a part of. But every effort you make to talk to people and to show that friendly face is going to return dividends. So talk intelligently, provide clear, easy to understand information, and follow through on promises made. Because when we trust the people involved and what we're being told, we have more confidence around the project and what's happening. So also show the whole picture with your, with your information that you're giving, not just segments. Because when we can see how the whole thing works, and not just those little slices, it's much easier to understand. Don't get bogged down in too deep analysis, and paralysis through analysis. right? Because it's good to have a mixture of both qualitative and quantitative measurements. So listen to your stakeholders and how they're becoming comfortable with the change, and then compare that to the data in your spreadsheets and surveys. 
At the end of the day, everyone should be excited for the coming change, not just the sponsor or the project team. Everyone understands why things are changing, how it's going to benefit them, and what actions they need to take to get those benefits. So here are three next steps. Number one, I believe this is the most important one, stop the bad habits and start good ones. Step number two, be helpful by understanding what your end users need and send the right message to the right people at the right time. And three, get engagement and excitement through easy to understand communications that fulfill the needs and get people's attention. So in the next short video, I'll share how be helpful get engagement leads to effective team management. Until next time, I'm Paul Fleming McCullough. Be helpful.